Fafa Picout. Brother, how are you? Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you for having me, man. I'm I'm great in the in Music City over here, brother. Music City, man. How does it feel? How does it feel to to you know to live in Nashville now? I love it, man. So far, it's been uh, it's been great. The city's awesome. The the people are really friendly and and really receptive. So it's uh, it's been a great experience so far. And we saw we saw what Nashville was capable of last season uh, as they made the playoffs. Um, tell tell us a little bit about how you've been adapting to the system. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, they've done great things in the in the past few years since starting the franchise. They've made playoffs every year. Um, now it's a question of of me coming in and and adding something more to a team that's already been doing well. So obviously, again, I'm not here to to just change things, but if not, just be a great addition to the team. And again, it's uh, it's just a question of learning everybody's strengths and weaknesses. Like I always say, you want to. Um, you want to promote your your teammates' strengths and try to mask and hide their weaknesses as a player. So, um, me coming into the team, I want to I want to do the best in in being a strength to everybody and and bring something more to the table. Um, your teammate with the MVP of the league last year. How is it to play with him? I know I know that you know he's he had a, a few injuries and he's coming back from that. But how how is it to share the locker room with him and also to to be able to perform on the field with him? Oh, it's great. Um, we've also built a great friendship off the field. Uh, it's, it's been amazing. I was at his wedding a few days ago. Um, also, just camaraderie during preseason was amazing. Um, getting to know each other. We actually played each other in Germany in the Pokal Cup in 2016. Oh, wow. My mom came to that game in, in Germany. So that's how I remembered it. Um, him and John Brooks were teammates. So we had some, some buddies in common. But then um, also his quality on the field is amazing and it kind of makes my work a bit easier. And again, like I said, and as you said also, the, the injury, him coming back, we're starting to actually get more minutes together on the field. So that's going to take time for us to gel, but you're starting to see little passes slip through. It's going to be a headache, I think, for a lot of defenses when they kind of have to deal with myself, him, our striker, and also shaft speed on the other side. There's a lot to deal with um, uh, going forward, and if we continue to um, if we continue to build that bond, I think we we can create something dangerous. But he's a heck of a player and and a fun guy and a good good a good dude just to be around. So um, besides our friendship, and also we also have that on the field, and I think it's going to be dangerous. Nice, nice. Um, with the guys here at the podcast, uh, usually we have we have this discussion uh, as to how how is it how how to become a successful MLS team as far as a franchise. And half of the guys uh, believe that usually you know what's what's been the trend in a few teams is bringing in young South American players and actually you know. Uh, combining them with homegrown talent. Do you feel like that's the, that that will be a, a successful road to a team? Or do you feel that maybe you can bring like European players, veterans to actually, you know, accommodate that as well? Which, 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 um, which scenario do you feel like it's, you know? My scenario, my, my personal opinion is a bit different. <clears throat> okay. I think, I think having stability and consistency is the is probably the most important having a similar group over the years a lot of times um clubs want to change their roster too often and thinking that bringing in a bunch of good players is going to change it but you need a close-knit group you need a few guys that have been there understand the club um are diehards as well you need a few special talents you need experience and then you need some fresh blood maybe some south american blood maybe some european um, young talents that are willing to come in and and just and be creative special players as well. I think we're starting to see that we're producing that in the country as well. Um, but also bringing players from abroad is important. But I think more than anything, the biggest importance is is keeping a consistent group over time because a lot of clubs, um, and I've seen it on a personal note, change and change and change. And it's not that the players are not good. But you start to lose maybe a club culture, and and um, and as you see that that doesn't allow you to form a consistency within results and and success going forward, and that's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, you grew up in Miami. 
Uh, it's been four seasons now since we have Inter Miami. Um, what can you tell us a little bit about that club? You know, because you faced them a couple of times. Uh, what do you see from an outsider? You know, I know that you're not you're not necessarily in Miami, but uh, what, what what do you see as a team? Well, primarily as an organization, I'm just happy that that Miami has a club now and and fans. Uh, you know, our our soccer culture down there is is amazing and just to have people be able to go to games consistently every weekend or every other weekend um and also to see young players growing up as opposed to when we grew up um just playing with with the ohala type of vibe like you know yeah. when, we, when we get a chance at something whatever happens happens now you have kids that have a structure they can go to an academy and and at least get something into a professional environment and, and have a chance at becoming professional and it's a quicker shot um, I think there's some good young talents coming up in the club from what I've seen and, and from what I've peeped when I when I poke my head in the city. Um, so I wish them the best. Obviously, it's it's home. So um, I think the club's in the right direction, but they just have to keep pushing towards that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we can see that. We can see that they're, they're slowly growing. Uh, you got into a topic that I wanted to get to next, uh, which is comparing where when we grew up here in Miami, and we were becoming players uh, compared to what it is now. You know, uh, you mentioned that the structure is different, but I wanted to get your your thought on uh, how it was back then as to how it is now. You know, if we, we can see we can see that there's over 60 academies now. In yeah. So I, I wanted to get a little bit more into that. So, so I moved to Miami from New York. I was nine years old and uh, I started at West Kendall Soccer. And back then, the Fusion were still around. And that's when they had come to, they did a player's, um, a player appearance. I think six of the guys, Jay Heaps, as I remember vividly, and a few of the guys came to, to do a little clinic with us. And, um, you know, with that sparking um, even more fire in, uh, in my desire to become a professional player, and also growing up, even though we wanted and we had so many talents, we had amazing players everywhere around the city because we have in Miami, we had so many guys from different backgrounds from all walks of earth. The hard part was the direction. There wasn't, there wasn't a direction of where we can clearly have a path to professional soccer. It was, like I said, a hopeful, a hopeful adventure. Like, uh, okay, I'm playing, but what's next you know like uh yeah. great system involved and as we know back then discipline in miami wasn't always the greatest i think having an academy now also creates that discipline um it's not going to be tolerable of everything um in comparison to what we grew up in where we had so many talented players again like i said but not a direct not a direct uh view or or opportunity to become something and i've seen so many players fall through the cracks simply because we don't we didn't have an academy system or a professional team and other academies around the city so to now see that it's um it's there and these kids are starting at academies at u12 u13 u14 yeah. watching them come up through a system it's like this is so different to what we had where we were split between west kendall southern soccer who then became ksc uh kendall soccer collision we had uh, West, Western. we had uh, Coral Springs, where West Pines, and there was talents everywhere. If I start naming names that you'll know, um, yeah. that maybe the rest of the country or the rest of the world should have heard of, but didn't simply because there was not a there was not a direct path. It's unfortunate, but I'm glad that now we've been able to pave the way in some in some sense, and even greater that now there's an MLS club in the city that can help um, sculpt these kids and, and give them an opportunity that maybe we didn't have. Um, I eventually got blessed to go to Italy early on, but not everybody got that chance. And we have a lot of talents that fell through the cracks and, and hopefully that will no longer be the case with, uh, with the MLS team. Yeah, and, and not, only, not only do you see uh, growth within having an MLS team, but you also see now uh, little projects and programs where the MLS is, is, is working with the MLS Next Pros yep. uh, and all those within different types of clubs. Um, you, we touched a, a topic that is very important. I believe it's, it's, it's a super important pro, uh, topic, which is a youth development. 
uh, the youth development primarily in the states. Uh, uh, in your belief, what do you think needs to get better for us to make that that next step? Because you you played overseas and you know how players have developed either either in Italy or in Germany. What needs to happen for us to take that next step? I believe we're in the right direction. I think um, already having academies is a huge step. Like I said, there wasn't that structure before with players. And we're going to see the fruits of that and what we're sowing now in the next few years. As we've already seen at certain clubs like Dallas, uh, Philly, you've seen the, the players that are pushed through and have gone to Europe and are doing very well. Um, I think that's going to become more consistent. And I think it's going to get to a point where these academies are going to produce players that are going to want to stay in the MLS as it becomes more appealing and as it already has become more appealing for foreign players to come to the country. The league has grown tremendously in the last six, seven years. Um, but I think overall for for growth of these players, the importance is, um, is going to be correct coaching and also um, understanding that we need to adapt to the world football system but at the same time understand the dynamic of our country we're a very big country so there has to still be ways to find players that maybe are not getting into these academies but not falling through the cracks because we have so many talents that are possibly missing these academy opportunities that are being you know not getting seen under the the micro that are missing the microscope or whatever the case is we have a lot of those players too so because the country's so big so we have yeah. to understand that dynamic as opposed to a country like italy or france where you can drive through the country in 10 hours you know um if i drive 10 hours from miami out we're just getting to atlanta barely yeah. leaving the state so, jacksonville yeah <laughs> so <laughs> america is a big country and we have to understand that there's a lot of talent but we have to continue to find um, creative ways of tapping into that talent and finding that talent and not discouraging players young where they feel like they don't have a future if they didn't get into academy. That's why I don't completely want to do away with the college system or completely do away with certain programs that may be other ways of finding great talents because as much as I'm happy that we finally have an academy system and I think that's the right path to go, we also want to continue to to nurture these players that may be the next Clint Dempsey's and 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 uh, Demarcus Beasley's and Donovan's um, through other paths and and other ways and structures. Uh, looking back at your 10 plus years career, uh, and this is my last one before I let you go, um, is there anything that you would do differently? No. Um, there's a lot of things that were out of my control as a player. Um, I think over my career, I've always given more than 110% and more more than that. Um, and I've always tried to make the most honest decisions possible. Sometimes too honest, sometimes too innocent in the sense of the business side. Um, and uh, that would be the only thing I say that maybe I would have tried to change and do differently. But in the end, everything's led me to the point that I'm at today. And um, it's kept me in the game for a long time and still having success. So there's not much I would change. All my mistakes or or more than mistakes, I would say all of the things that I've been through have allowed me to get to a point where I can help guide the youth and the, the next crop growing up to not have to go through maybe the pain and, and the difficulties that I went through in this business and in this industry more than the sports side of it. So um, as I transition to, to a seasoned vet, um, who still has a lot of sprints in his legs. I, um, I try to nurture and help these young guys as much as possible um, to, to give them uh, encouragement and, and allow them to, to see things from a different view uh, from somebody who's already gone through it. Fafa, we appreciate your time, brother. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for being with us. We wish you the very best in the season. Hopefully, you still got a lot of goals left to, to score. Thank you so much, man. Thank you guys for having me, and God bless you, man. God bless, brother. Thank God you. Bless.